One of the craziest connections of Star Wars music is one that I actually only discovered about a year ago, and that's the music of the opening crawl. Today, I'll be breaking down that connection. This is Star Wars Music Analysis. The opening crawl for Star Wars is one of the most iconic visuals and also sounds in all of film. Just by hearing that first chord, every image of Star Wars can be conjured within someone's imagination. But it was in no way original to Star Wars. The idea of the crawl itself was actually rather antique and dated at this point. Many films and shows from the 1930s used this visual device to jump immediately into a story. But by the 70s, this was a distant relic. But Lucas, being nostalgic for past movies and shows like Union Pacific, and Flash Gordon, Chapter Two, following the wake of dictators, war, and wanted the crawl to be the beginning of his space opera. So, as Lucas was thinking of music for his film long before Williams was on the scene, he was also thinking about many films from this same era and of the great film composers such as Korngold. Lucas had this to say about the score. I want a classical score. I want the Korngold kind of feeling about this thing. It's an old-fashioned kind of movie, and I want that grand soundtrack that they used to have on movies. And Lucas would always create and imagine with the music already in mind. So, as temp music, the music placed into a movie until original music is created, Lucas chose the fanfare theme from Korngold's score to the 1942 film King's Row. Now, I had never heard this music before, but take a quick listen and you'll understand why I'm bringing this up. The similarities are immediate to our ear, and I'm going to break down the similarities and differences of these two themes in the second half of this video. But still, Williams had the chance to choose other music but didn't. And it seems like one thing to rip off classical music that not too many people may be familiar with, but I think of it being something entirely different to copy music from another film score, and a well-known one at that, and then reset it to a later film audience. Williams had this to say about Korngold and others' inspiration upon him. I've been particularly fascinated by the émigré from Europe in the 1930s, People like Max Steiner and Eric Korngold, but also Vernon Duke and Kurt Weill, who came with Billy Wilder and Ernst Lubitsch to Hollywood. They brought this tremendous European culture. In a certain sense, my colleagues and I are the artistic grandchildren of these men. We have been the beneficiaries of a rich tradition that grew up here in the early days of sound, in the 1930s and 40s. Now, if you aren't familiar with the movie King's Row, as I wasn't, I would recommend checking it out sometime, if only just for fun. It's one of those old movies that kind of has a twist in the middle and then goes from there. In addition to being the origin of the main theme for Star Wars through the film's own score, the movie happens to also be the film that really highlighted actor Ronald Reagan's career. I'm Drake McHugh. Maybe you've heard about me. Do you wonder if you haven't, the way people gab? And most of what they say is true. That's right. The same Ronald Reagan who would go on to be President of the United States, create the missile defense system nicknamed Star Wars, and even refer to the Soviet Union as the Empire. So now let's actually look at the music itself and see just how close these two themes resemble each other. Now, Williams tries to trick us by moving down a half step from King's Row, B major, to B flat major, but in both cases the actual theme begins with eighth note triplet pickups. Star Wars stays on the dominant throughout though, while King's Row moves down a fourth and back up. In both cases these pitches are part of the overall dominant chord, setting us up for our initial downbeat on the tonic. Next comes the most unmistakable connection. Both themes drastically move from the tonic up to the dominant in an ascending perfect fifth. And this becomes the key interval of the entire theme for both as well. The perfect fifth is a characteristically heroic and dramatic interval as well, so it makes sense that Williams would want to use it. 
In the next measure, William stays with the energetic feel of the triplets as he moves down by steps before dramatically leaping all the way up to the tonic. However, the King's Row theme utilizes a more strict and regal straight eighth note figure, while still moving down by steps. From here, the themes continue to vary. The problem is that our ears have already been tainted. While Korngold's theme does bring back the triplet figure, it's always used as the pickup from here on out while Williams continues to put the triplet eighths on strong downbeats. And Williams adds more complexity as well as energy and intrigue to his line as he leaps again to the octave, while Korngold's more tame and regal melody moves entirely in steps. Korngold, again composing a more controlled and stasis theme, ends the first phrase on the tonic, not requiring a second phrase as a response. Williams, however, is more ambitious and ends his first phrase on the second scale degree, leaving it feeling open and unresolved. Because of this, the Star Wars theme has an additional phrase before moving on to allow that first phrase to be answered with a stable ending, allowing us to get his theme further stuck in our ears. Except Williams continues to not give us a stable phrase ending even in phrase 2, again contrasting Korngold's melody. Now if the part after this in Korngold's theme also sounds familiar to you, it's probably because it's similar to the Rebel theme that we hear a few seconds later. But it's also referenced in Williams' 1978 soundtrack for Superman, written pretty much right on the heels of A New Hope. So technically, the second part of Korngold's theme still follows chronologically with how Williams used it. However, Williams still follows the tradition of Korngold and others of composing a far more lyrical section immediately after the fanfare opening in order to create contrast in the music, before returning to the triumphant, heroic music that he began with. To me, Williams' score goes far beyond what Korngold did in terms of texture underneath the theme, the actual melodic contour of the theme, and his transition out of the loud bombastic section into the rest of the movie. This is what sets Williams apart from earlier composers, his ability to orchestrate many different textures and emotions into the score. But let me know what you think. Did you know about this connection before, or is it new to you as well? And does it detract from your love of the opening crawl at all, or do you think that these two pieces are unsimilar enough? After watching King's Row, it never seems to fit with that movie, and I can't tell if it's because I'm so used to it in Star Wars, or if it really just didn't fit with the story of King's Row. Tell me if I've missed anything in the comments below, and before you go, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to learn more about the music of the galaxy far, far away. And as always, may the be with you.